We have done some cool stuff with text inside DaVinci Resolve on this channel, and today we're gonna do more. This is a great introduction for anyone who wants to just do more with text and titles in Resolve. We're gonna look at the shading element system inside the Text Plus tool, and it's so powerful. We're gonna take something like plain text and turn it into this. This really cool sort of sticker treatment. You have this giant white outline like you might see on stickers and even this subtle drop shadow so it makes it look sort of like another element above your scene. So let's get started. I'm gonna move to this empty spot on my timeline and the first thing I'm gonna do is come to generators and drag in solid color. I'm gonna set this to just a nice light gray. This is really just to give us some more separation so we don't have a black background layer, especially when we added this drop shadow. But after that, I'm gonna come to titles and drag in a plain text text plus effect. We can type in whatever we want in here, like subscribe. And then just use their general controls for stuff like uh, size or changing up the font to anything else you might like. Something that big and bulky is probably gonna look great here. Now, after we have those general settings, inside the inspector, all this was done in this first text area, but we're gonna shuffle over to shading. And you can see by default, this white text is the shading element one. And if we open this drop down, we have up to eight shading elements to work with. That's eight copies of this text that we can modify in really cool ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come to shading element two, toggle that on. By default, it is this red outline. I'm gonna pull up the thickness just a little bit and actually pull down this red so now it's this black background. Then I'm gonna go back to shading element one now that we have some separation. And I'm gonna come down to where it says type solid. I'm gonna change that to gradient. By default, this will give us this white to black gradient from top to the bottom, but I'm going to toggle back to my example here and see what we have. We, go, we cycle through a few colors. We have yellow, green, this sort of teal, then darker blue. I'm gonna select this first arrow, so we know that's what we're working with. Create this nice punchy yellow. Then this sort of neon green, this teal blue. And then I'm gonna click on this white and make this a darker blue. Maybe not too dark. And you'll see this is a little different than what we were working with before because this gradient is still going top to bottom instead of left to right, but we have this mapping angle. So if I change this to negative 90, that will start to get us there, but you can see it is applying this gradient on a character level, which we have this mapping level. We can change from character to either line or word. If you had multiple words in the line, you could always do line, but either of those should work for here. And now we have that same gradient, which I think looks great for the look we're going for. It's big and bold, it's cool. Now, what I'm gonna do next, some of these shading elements have a lot of things built in. If I see number four and toggle that on, by default it is this giant blue background. So I'm actually gonna come down to element six and toggle that on because by default, this has just the uh, standard default settings. It isn't actively doing anything. It's just another white copy of text. But there, I'm gonna toggle from appearance to outline because that gives us this thickness slider. And I can crank this up and now you start to see that white background. And by default, this slider only goes up to 0.1, but here's something really important you need to know if you're doing anything in Fusion or I guess Resolve as well is that while this slider only goes up to 0.1, you can click in this box and type in any number you want. I'm gonna go up to 0.3. That looks pretty good. I might go up to like 0.35, maybe a little more, 0.4. Cool. And then you're just like balancing elements. I'm gonna pull up that black a little bit more and then even come down to text and pull up, pull down tracking. And of course, this is all dynamic. You can change this font at any time and all of these settings will carry over. You do see as this is that white on the background does look pretty flat. So we can come back over to shading element. I'm gonna come all the way down to seven now, toggle that on. And to get this sort of drop shadow, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come to outline as well. I'm going to pull the outline amount, this thickness from the element before it. So we have the same thickness as before, and I'm gonna pull down all these color sliders so that's black. So if I were to come over to six and toggle that off, now we would have this black background behind it, but that is hidden by this sort of main sticker layer. I don't, might bring that down a little bit and then paste that over. But one of the other many tools, we're only touching a few here. If we come down to softness, then we can pull up the softness on this X and Y a little bit you start to see some stuff around the edges, but you also have position, and you can offset any of these layers. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little hair, 
and off to the right a hair, and then probably pull up that softness even more. So we have some different stuff to play with. This is a little harsher than my first example. Ah, uh, maybe not. And with just adding a few layers of the shading elements, we have this really cool design that I like a lot. And like I said, it is fully dynamic. You can come back, change any of these main settings or change the text. Thanks. Howdy. And it all just works. And of course, we just had sort of main text layers and outline layers. Like I showed off before, if I just come over to eight and play around, we have so many other options. We can create a text box that's dynamic. We can create just an outline. Again, from individual characters to the entire word. That one's real big. There are so many different things you can add and all of them just exist inside this one effect. So that's all, just a real quick video specifically covering the shading elements inside the text plus effect. There is so much potential here for just good looking text. And especially if you are choosing to use the text plus effect over the standard text effect, they have sort of pros and cons. But if you're using the text plus effect, use the full power available to you. I'm gonna keep talking about text. It's super cool. I would love to do more of these like short and sweet videos. So stick around for some of those. Thanks, I'll see you next time.